Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great PKU Day 2020. Looks like there's been a packed programme of events. Why is food labelling so complicated? It's annoying. So I've been asked to answer a few questions that people have submitted. And I'm going to start first of all with Lucy and Sophie, who have asked about food labelling. Uh, I agree with you, Lucy and Sophie, food labelling is really difficult. And for those of you with PKU and your families, it's really important that it's right. I know that uh, Anita McDonald and lots of your colleagues are busily on the case looking at food labelling. But you're right, the government does need to do something better about food labelling. It's important to you to know what is actually in the food that you're eating. So I think that we'll continue to press the government on this issue to improve it. There's a lot of people who think it should be improved, so I think you're not on your own, but it's really important for you. Hi, my name's Cathy and I have a five-year-old son with PKU called Rory. And my question to MPs is, um, we've just had a change of chef at school and it's caused a huge amount of challenges for us with regards to changing menus, making sure staff are trained and able to adapt to cook for Rory with his uh, special diet. Qvan would make life a whole lot easier. And last week we actually ended up with Rory being fed the wrong pasta, um, which ordinarily for other children isn't a problem, but for Rory it, it put him up to his uh, total amount of exchanges for the day. And that accident, if I hadn't have spotted the um, the wording in his book in that we have a record of um, what he eats. If I hadn't spotted that and the grandparent, for example, in normal circumstances had collected him, we would never have known. Something like Kivan would make it so much easier and make life not only easier for us as parents, for schools, but also so Rory can actually look and um, eat like his friends. Uh, that drug is available within the rest of Europe. What are you doing to try and help equalise the um, the opportunities for our children to be able to have the same care that they deserve and that their um, counterparts in the rest of Europe have? Thank you. So the next question uh, I've listened to is from Cathy Thompson, whose son Rory has PKU. And Cathy, I'm sorry to hear that Rory had that experience at school where he was given the wrong pasta, because it's really important to get the diet right. So you ask, what are we doing to press the government? Well, certainly through the All Party Parliamentary Group, which brings MPs from every party together, as you'd have seen today, we've all been pushing to make sure that people are, first of all, aware that you need to have Kuvan, and secondly, to make sure that it gets through the processes. Now, it's not easy, it's difficult. and But we're gonna keep on pushing with NHS England and with the government to make sure that Kuvan is available because I know it makes such a difference to people. So um, we're going to keep on pressing the government to do that. Um, we know that there's another assessment coming up through NHS England and I'm talking to Kate and Caroline and others in the NSPKU about how we can make sure that that's open and transparent and gives you a fair chance of getting Kuvan uh, available as well. It makes such a difference to Rory and to so many other people. Hello everybody, happy International PKU Day. My name is Chelsea and I live in Wirral, Merseyside. I have a daughter of two years old, Willow, who has PKU. And my partner, Stuart, Willow's father has PKU. He's 31 off diet, whereas Willow is on diet. During these uncertain times, going through COVID and the recent pandemic, we've seen the PKU petition take a back seat. So last year it was due to Brexit, this year it's because of coronavirus. The PKU community have worked too hard for our voices not to be heard. It's been 11 years waiting now. So my question for Liz is, is there an update for Coven or what is the progress with this at the moment? That's my only question for you. Hope everyone has a lovely PKU day. I'd like to see what everyone's getting up to and take care, stay safe. Bye everyone. So the next question was from Chelsea 
whose daughter Willow, is two years old, has PKU and whose partner also has it. So really, your question was about what are we doing on the campaigning front to make sure that PKU and the need for Kuvan isn't forgotten? Well, sadly, it has been a difficult time because of the COVID-19 pandemic and a lot of time has been taken upon that. But a lot of us in Parliament are really keen to keep this going, to work with NSPKU to make sure that the issue isn't forgotten. I'm still chasing a meeting following the Prime Minister's commitment during the general election to sort out the Kuvan situation. I'm still pushing ministers for a meeting. Uh, it's been pushed back, but uh, we haven't forgotten about it. We'll keep going. And also talking to NHS England about the next uh, appraisal process and trying to make sure that it's transparent, but also that we really have the very best chance to uh, see that Kuvan is made available. It's so important. But I do feel for all of you because I know you're all plugging away there. I see all your tweets and read them all. And I know that this is a really important issue. And certainly I, and I know lots of other MPs from across the parties are really keen to make sure that we carry on the campaigning work. Why isn't there more PKU food available in the shops? So the last question I've got is from a young lady with a beautiful blue bow in her hair. I think it might be Sophie, but I'm not sure. But anyway, thank you for your question. And you're asking about why PKU food isn't available in the supermarkets. And that's an interesting question, isn't it? I guess because it's very specialised and because um, there are some things that aren't widely available and have to be prescribed by your doctor to make sure that you can get them. The really important thing is that you can get them and that uh, people are able to access the foods that they need. And also that question we had earlier about labelling is really important as well, isn't it? Because there are things you can eat from the supermarket if you only have the right information. So that's an interesting question and maybe in the future we will see uh, PKU suitable food available in the supermarkets. But in the meantime, folks, I'm afraid you're going to have to keep planning and working hard and doing all those fantastic recipes that I've seen you doing on Twitter. Hello, Katie Barrier. I know that's your name because I'm your nana. Tell me about yourself. Um, I'm 12 on Wednesday and I've had PKU all my life. What difference does it make having PKU? What can you not have? Um, well, I can only have six grams of protein a day and this makes it quite hard because things like eggs and meats and fish, they have like 50 grams of protein in them. Right. So I can't have them. We do have a lot of replacement foods now, like our own pasta and bread and things, but it's still not the same as being able to have the real things. So you can't go into a cafe and, and just have what your friends have? No, because a lot of the time if I am out with my friends and they order things, I remember this one time I was out at a cafe and they all ordered desserts and I should just sit there and watch them eating it because I know it looks so good and I couldn't have anything. So how does food labelling help Katie? Well, it helps a lot because um, sometimes if I'm getting a snack, I'll go to the cupboard and I'll check the back of something and I'll say, oh, this has one gram protein in it, I'll have this. But um, some of them say per 100 and it'll say 3 grams per 100. And then we have this little laminated chart on the door of one of our cupboards. So I'll go to that and say 3 grams is this much and it'll weigh out that much grams. But if we didn't have labelling, that would be impossible. And I need to learn how to guess and estimate how to do things. And this would make life so much harder than it already is. And it already is pretty hard with BQU. Let's just make it 10 times worse. Hi Katie, um, yeah, I, I can't imagine how difficult it is for you uh, going out with your friends and being able to choose something to eat when you have PKU. It must be very difficult. Without a medical treatment like Kuvan being available, um, that makes it very difficult. And 
not having proper labelling of foods in shops or in cafes makes it doubly hard. So uh, as part of the all-party group, I know that we're keeping a close eye on the laws around making sure that food labelling is done properly to make sure that the protein content and the phenylalanine content is properly displayed to help you and your family and your friends be able to make proper choices around these things. And uh, I just hope that that continues that we're able to make sure that those laws are in place and that we get Kuvan to help you in a longer term. The diet is getting hard sometimes and I'm often hungry. I just want to be like my friends and not have as a strict diet. Do you think we can get Kuvan in Scotland to help me and people like me? Hi Boyd, um, thanks very much for your question. I tried the PKU diet, if you can really call it a diet, for a very short time. So although I don't know what it's like to live with PKU, it certainly gave me an insight of how hard it is. It was very, very hard to stick to. And um, anything that makes that better and makes it easier for you and for your parents and your loved ones and your friends to be able to support you with PKU, I think we should be supporting. So. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a medic, but from what I've seen, Kuvan could make a massive difference to children's lives with PKU and I really hope that the decisions around whether or not it can be on the NHS can be made in Scotland very quickly. It is quite a complicated process, uh, but I would certainly be doing all that I can to try and see Kuvan available in Scotland as quickly as possible. I'm Paris Parsons and I live in Neath in South Wales and I have PKU. I'd like to give a massive thank you to Christina Reese and everyone in her Neath office for their continued support throughout all this. I think everyone who has to deal with PK will agree that there is a clear lack of understanding about the condition due to it being so rare. We have to face this on a day-to-day -day basis. Unless you know someone with PK, you can be oblivious to the condition and the challenges that come with it. This means we are being left to deal with ignorance and problems occurring in our daily lives. One example of this has been the applications for DLA and PIP. PKU people are not being listened to or understood during these applications. This is tiring and it needs to be changed. Are there any updates or has any progress been made in ensuring that PKU patients get better recognition in the benefit system, particularly with DLA and PIP applications? Thank you. I didn't know what the rare metabolic disease PKU was until I was approached by some of my constituents. Keris was one of the first to contact me a few years ago. My learning curve was steep and most times deeply moving. I learned about the faulty version of an enzyme that PKU sufferers have that doesn't break down the amino acid phenylalanine contained in protein and that buildup of this amino acid can cause brain damage. That the only way to prevent this buildup is to follow the most restrictive of diets. The harshest part is eating only 10 grams of protein a day, and that's the equivalent of one or two ordinary small slices of bread. Some fruit and vegetables are permitted, but bread and pasta are definitely not. To avoid malnutri malnutrition, these are replaced by specially manufactured food which is extremely unpalatable and is only available on prescription. At least in Wales, we have free prescriptions, but the special food is sometimes very hard to get hold of. So eating disorders are a real problem. So is socializing with friends because you can't eat the same normal food or drink ordinary drinks. I've watched Keris cope with all the demands this has put on her life. It's bad enough coping with adolescence, but I cannot dream what it was like coping with PKU as well. Keris is a very articulate young woman with a great sense of humour who's carved out a career in the NHS. She's a great inspiration to me and to my office staff who have supported her with a struggle with the Department of Work and Pensions of the UK Government. The sections that a PKU sufferer may expect to score points for in DLA and PIP applications are... Preparing the food, eating and drinking, managing your treatment. Unfortunately, unless the applicant has another underlying condition, such as autism, the applicant usually scores zero on all of these sections. 
For PIP, if a claimant is able to show that they can prepare a simple meal from fresh ingredients and monitor their own health and take their medication without help, then they will not score any points. What is not taken into account is how difficult this is or how it impacts on an applicant's mental health, but most importantly, the severe restricted diet they have to live with. This is so unjust, so unfair. And what is inexplicable is that under DLA, sufferers like Keris got support, but when she transferred to PIP, she got absolutely nothing. After meeting Keris many years ago, I joined the all-party parliamentary group for PKU, formed by my good friend Liz Twist, the MP for Bladen, and now I'm the Vice Chair. Kate of the NSPKU is our Secretariat, and we have many supporters. We have raised this inequality and will continue to raise this inequality of PKU sufferers with the UK government until they do something. We will not give up. Hello, I'm Tesney. I have PKU in countries all over Europe, also Russia, Ireland and many others. Governments value the life experiences of people like me and allow access to Kuvan, a potentially life-changing drug. I'm worried that when other new treatments come out, we will be denied those benefits as well. What needs to change to make the government understand how needed these treatments are and, are, and, and agree to pay for them? Hello, my daughter has PKU. She must not eat 85% of all food and she has to stick to a strict dietary regime every day, all day for her whole life. It's miserable and it's limiting. She suffers side effects. All over the world, governments are willing to pay for treatments that improve lives like hers. What needs to change to convince the British government to value the life experience of people with PKU and sit down with Biomarin to sort out a deal for Kuvan? Tesney and her mother Claire have raised important questions about access to Kuvan and other drugs that may help PKU sufferers. We know how difficult it is to follow the incredibly restrictive diet and the physical and psychological problems that go with it. So it would be great if there was a drug available that PKU sufferers could easily take in tablet form each day that would allow protein to be part of their diet and stop the damaging amino acid from building up in their bodies, which would lead to brain damage. And this is where Kuvan comes in. It's produced by Biomarin and works for about 25% of PKU sufferers. Trials show that sufferers could eat more protein whilst keeping blood levels safe and some sufferers were able to stop eating manufactured food completely. Despite Biomarin marketing Kuvan in 2007 in the US and it being used in most EU countries since 2008, NHS England would not commission use of Kuvan as late as 2015 due to insufficient evidence, they say. In 2017, NHS England told NSPKU that Kuvan would be appraised under the Special Commissioning Policy. And in 2018, Kuvan was referred to NICE, but we still haven't had a ruling. Wales follows NICE recommendations. So at this time, with no positive ruling from NICE, Kuvan is not available on the NHS in Wales. Other drugs are being developed in the US by Biomarin and Synlogic, which may take years to be on the market. But it's so extremely frustrating for everyone when we have a drug that's ready and has been commissioned in so many countries, but not in England. But we will continue to fight for justice. Our APPG and NSPKU have held debates and put on raising awareness events. We challenge parliamentarians to go on a PKU diet for a day. I'm a vegan and have been for many years, so I thought I'd be better off than most because I eat lots of fruit, vegetables and salad. But I love soya milk, brown bread and my vice is crisps, so I really struggled. We had a superb NSPKU conference in Cardiff and I stayed all day to listen to people who told their own PKU stories. And we had working groups where we analysed food and drink contents and we tried out PKU food. I cried most of the day because people were so positive and stoic about their circumstances and had turned their lives round 
by determination not to be demonized by PKU. We will not give up until Kuvan or a drug similar to Kuvan is available at minimal cost in the UK. We will not give up. Thank you for answering our questions today. This is my son Tuara. Hi. He has PKU. Northern Ireland has the highest prevalence of people with PKU in the UK. We have been helping the NSPKU to reach out to all cross-party MPs to improve the treatment and cure of people with PKU. What can our community in Northern Ireland do to push this forward further, Jim? Um, I look forward to your response. Okay, and, and thank you again for your question as well. And uh, um, You're a lovely young fella uh, and I want to uh, wish uh, Dara uh, all the best uh, and, and hopefully that his, uh, his health will continue to improve. Uh, your questions are very appropriate questions. One that I've asked the Minister is one that I've written to my colleagues on the Health Committee. It's one that transcends uh, the political divide. There's no political issues, there's no difference in political parties in this. We're all united uh, and we do want to see PKU uh, being elevated to a position where the drugs are available to ensure that your son and, and others in Northern Ireland. Uh, Northern Ireland has the highest rate of PKU in the whole United Kingdom. I know that from my meetings with uh, those in Westminster and elsewhere. So uh, I, I think um, there is an onus, I believe, on us here in Northern Ireland, within all the problems that there are very clearly within the health service, to ensure uh, that rare diseases uh, are at the top of the priority list when it comes to to allocation of the correct drugs. Uh, I've been a member of the um, uh, the, the group at the, at the Assembly when I was an Assembly member and I'm also now a member of the group over in, in Westminster in relation to rare diseases. So I want to see PKU available uh, in Northern Ireland uh, so we can reduce the rate of PKU, uh, not just for those in Northern Ireland, but indeed for all those across the whole of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. And we will do that. You have my commitment to do that and I'm here to help you. God bless. Hello Jim, my name's Anne-Marie. This is Georgie and Emmy. They're my 18 month old identical twin daughters who were diagnosed with PKU at birth. After living in Australia for 10 years with my Australian husband, we made the decision to move back to Northern Ireland when we found out we were having the twins. Soon after birth, we discovered that they had PKU. If we still lived in Australia, they would have access to the life-changing drug Kuvan, but unfortunately this drug isn't currently available in the UK. Are we going to have to emigrate to Australia for the girls to have access to the to drug Kuvan? Anne-Marie, thank you for your question and, and uh, I wish you and, and, and the twins all the best. Uh, we, we in, in, in uh, myself as a Member of Parliament, but obviously at Westminster and here in Northern Ireland as well, where it's a devolved matter, I intend to push government and have done so in relation to uh, making sure that, they, that the drug is available to help you, your children and others across the whole of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Uh, no, should you emigrate back to Australia? Definitely not. Stay here uh, and we as parliamentarians uh, and as members of the Northern Ireland Assembly, for those who have uh, the, the responsibility for it, we will be doing our best to ensure that these uh, life-saving drugs are available for you and your children. I think it's very important for us uh, to also recognise uh, through the rare diseases, which I spoke on just in Parliament this week, uh, that the, that the uh, whenever the tests, the clinical tests are done, uh, that the availability of the drug to make lives better and to help your children and all the other children uh, is something that I want to see happening. So you've got my full support uh, and the support of many.